Welcome to the Climate and Water Outlook for May to July 2015. While it looks like we'll get some decent rain over the next couple of months, it's unlikely to continue right through winter and spring, as the odds have increased for El Nino. But first, let's look at how we fared over the northern wet season. As expected, the wet started late in many areas, with the monsoon not arriving in Darwin until New Year's Eve. In fact, we only saw one big monsoonal burst in early January, bringing rain across large parts of inland Australia. Conditions in Alice Springs highlighted extreme variability at this time. In the second week of January, Alice Springs had 193 millimetres of rain and the Todd River started flowing. But after that, they didn't see a drop until April 16. The relatively weak 2014-15 wet season has compounded the effects of a poor season in 2013-14 and the fail wet in 2012-13. This means there has been little relief for those in drought affected areas across Western Queensland and New South Wales. In fact, the drought areas have expanded. Long-term rainfall deficiencies also continue in Western Victoria. Without good rains, many regions now have very dry, deep soils. The lack of moisture across the north has also meant little evaporation to keep things cool, leading to extreme heat in some areas. For instance, Borolula in the Northern Territory broke its March temperature record not just once, but on 13 days. Now let's see what may drive Australia's climate in the coming months. The tropical Pacific remains warmer than normal and all the models we survey suggest there's more warmth to come. Earlier this month we shifted our ENSO tracker up to El Nino alert. This means the odds of El Nino have increased to around 70% or nearly three times the normal chance. While El Nino increases the likelihood of a drier and warmer winter and spring for large parts of Australia, it doesn't guarantee it. Of the 26 El Ninos since 1900, 17 have led to widespread drought conditions in Australia. But El Nino isn't the only game in town. Sea surface temperatures in the Indian Ocean are very warm right now. This has been helping to feed moisture over inland Australia for much of this month. Leading into winter, we're likely to see a battle between the drier influence coming from the Pacific Ocean and the wetter patterns from the west. So what's the rainfall outlook for May to July? Well, it's heavily influenced by the warm Indian Ocean, with wetter than average conditions likely across much of Australia. Our outlook has moderate accuracy at this time of year. Other international climate models show a similar outlook for Australia, giving us a little more confidence. Most of the rain will sink into dry soils and not flow straight into streams. That's why our stream flow forecast to the end of June indicates lower than usual flows at 39 of 65 locations. Median flows are forecast at 17 locations and high flows are likely at only nine. Accuracy for our stream flow forecast is moderate at this time of year. Turning to temperature, the odds favour warmer than average days in the far north and south, but cooler in the interior as more cloud and moisture come in from the west. Cloud acts a bit like a blanket trapping heat overnight, so minimum temperatures are very likely to be above average. Accuracy for these outlooks is moderate to high at this time of year. So in summary, while odds favour wetter conditions averaged over the next three months, dry soils mean low stream flows are likely. And with an El Nino alert in place, it's looking unlikely that good rainfall will extend through winter and spring. For more details, head to our website at bomb.gov.au forward slash climate forward slash ahead. Our next video will be released on Thursday the 28th of May. For the Bureau of Meteorology, I'm Andrew Watkins.